Hello, thanks so much for joining us. My name is Jones Angel, sitting next to the head coach of Carolina baseball, Scott Forbes. Scott, is that weird to, to hear <laughs> still a couple days after? Is that weird to hear that title with your name? It, it is. <laughs> it's, uh, it's still, I, I just had a smile on my face um, the whole time and just more thankful and just really a humbling experience. So what have the last few days been like? How many text messages have you received? What has this whirlwind of the last four or five days been like for you? It's been just an outpouring of you know, congratulations, hearing from people that I played high school sports with, great friends in college, uh, other coaches. It hasn't been overwhelming, it's just been like cool. You know, <laughs> like man, and I was determined to get back with every one of them, so I've been able to do that. And, uh, you know, just being able to have that press conference with Coach Fox, I mm -hmm. thought was one of the neatest things. A lot of people don't get to experience that. Uh, but other than that, you know, the, everything else has been the same. Um, just recruiting right out of the gate and back at it. Take us back to, to last week or, or whenever it was that, that Mike Fox told you that he was planning on retiring. Kind of, what was that conversation like? What started going through your mind? You know, Coach and I are extremely close, uh, but out of respect to him over the years, I, I knew that, you know, Coach wasn't going to coach seven, eight more years because we talked about it. Uh, but I also told him, you know, you don't have to come in here and tell me every six months what you're thinking. Uh, and when you decide, just you'll decide and hopefully everything will work out. But Coach came in and talked to me on Monday. I had been up in Delaware um, with Mandy's family, and he said, hey, I want to sit down and talk to you. And we went over to the suite, and I had a I was like, okay, if Coach is bringing me over here talking to Sweet, maybe he's telling me something pretty serious. And he told me that he thought it was time. And, uh, you know, and I was really at the time, I could tell that he felt good about it. Mm -hmm. And he was happy. So that made me, you know, obviously the emotion was like, what's going to happen? Am I going to be named the head coach? You know, that type of stuff. But other than that, I just kind of focused on talking to Coach and, and listening to him because – I know that was a, a huge decision for a baseball guy like that and a coach. Sure. And uh, then we walked back over and I took a deep breath and thought, well, I guess I'll know what's going on here in the <laughs> next couple of days. So when the decision was made, I know Coach, uh, coach Fox addressed the team. You were there as well. What, what message did you have for the guys? Yeah, and that is one thing that, you know, you, you'll never forget your first team meeting as a head coach. And my message to them, uh, number one, was, you know, this is a tough time. So we're going to all work on being patient, doing what we're supposed to be doing to help not spread this thing. Uh, and then we just talked about the hopes of getting going, getting back on the field. Uh, the expectations don't change. Uh, the structure of the program doesn't change. Really the only difference is the head coach is Scott Forbes and not Coach Fox. Mm -hmm. I just remind them of that. Like our standards, they are what they are, and uh, this, you know, they're going to they're gonna remain. That's a good uh, point to bring up and a question I wanted to ask you. Th this is your first head coaching job at the college level, but obviously you've been right there with Coach Fox for a long time and, and seen how he built his program. What did you take from him as far as how to manage and build a program that, that you want to keep in place or build off of? Yeah, and that's a great question because, you know, when you've been coaching a while like I have, you get to know a lot of different coaches, sure. assistant and head coaches. So. I've always been one to ask questions and want to try to learn. So, you know, if I'm sitting in an event beside Tim Corbin or, or Coach Savage from UCLA, you know, I just ask a lot of questions. And Coach Fox, the thing that Coach Fox, even Coach Corbin and Coach Savage or any coach out there would tell you, the blueprint of how to want, run a program. And if you just look at his success at North Carolina Wesleyan, because mm -hmm. I got to see that as a player. Sure. Even though it was Division Three, coming to UNC, nothing was different. Uh, obviously, it was University of North Carolina, Division One, not you know Division Three. But the structure, uh, the discipline, um, the accountability, uh, and a lot of people mistake that as like, oh, we don't have fun. Well, we have a ton of fun, but we think that's what allows us to have fun and have success. Scott Forbes, new head baseball coach here at Carolina. So, what has been number one or number two on your list of things? So, you talked to the team, you, you got all your stuff done. What comes next? What comes now? I guess. Uh, our players, uh, you know, I reminded Coach Gaines, Coach Wurzbicki, everybody, uh, Dave, all of our staff over there, like, let's don't lose sight of that. Like, because there's, you know, as a, as a new head coach, you have a lot of things going through your head. You want to talk to this supporter, that supporter, former players, and do all that. But you don't want that to get above the guys that are coming in every day. 
we have a chance to get on the field starting tomorrow, and we haven't been on the field 150 plus days, and our season just ended so fast. So we've talked about let's just be organized, let's have our guys organized in groups with the protocols for the COVID, and let's just get them on the baseball field and remind them you know, how much of a pleasure it is to be to get on the field with all this going on. Sure. And all focus on them because they've started classes. We want them to get off to a good start there. Hopefully, you know, we can get the second round of the testing and they can do some weightlifting. So just all about the players. And I would say after that, you know, the former players, just contacting them, talking to them, and then letting the rest of the stuff, the recruiting, the phone calls, that's not going to stop no matter what. <laughs> <laughs> Last thing, Scott. So you've been here nearly 20 years as an assistant. You had opportunities to go be a head coach at other places, at some really big schools as well, but you elected to, to stay put at Carolina. Why was Carolina a place that kept you here long enough to, to give you the opportunity that you now have? You know, I decided um, just a lot of thought, a lot of prayer that my goal was to be, a head co be the head coach at UNC. And if it wasn't UNC, somewhere that I could walk in that locker room the first day as a head coach, and it doesn't always happen this way, but it was sure. a goal, that we, I could walk in there and feel like, okay, this team, we can get to Omaha. If not this year, next year. And, um, you know, those are select schools. But UNC is one of those because of the tradition, obviously, that has been built here. And it started way, way back, um, you know, before I even came here with Coach Fox. Those teams they had, you know, with all the former coaches here, Coach Rab, Coach Roberts. Uh, but I just felt like, you know, there's sometimes you leave because you have to leave, but sometimes you leave and you can't come back because of the situation or whatever it is. And I was telling these guys earlier, the sport coat I have on, um, when I turned down a great opportunity, which I thought was a great opportunity at the time, I went and bought this sport coat. I have worn it before, but with the <laughs> hopes that I would wear it one day to interview with Bubba and just have a chance to, to be in the running for the head coaching job. And, that worked out. We got, you know, got lucky. We made him wear that coat today for the interview. <laughs> he wasn't allowed to wear anything else but that jacket today. Scott, congratulations on your new position. We're also excited for you personally, for Mandy, your entire family. Look forward to seeing the great things that you're going to do with Carolina baseball. Yeah, well, I'm excited. Um, I'm excited for all of us, and I expect to see everybody at the Bosch in January. That's Scott Forbes, new head coach of Carolina baseball. Thanks so much for being with us.